What's up everybody? Happy Monday. Holy cow. Um, we only have three weeks to elk season. I can't believe it. I'm like panic mode right now. So hopefully you guys are a little bit ahead of me on uh, getting things prepped up, ready to rock. Uh, excited about this video. We've been getting so many questions. We did that elk calling during uh, elk week and appreciate you guys for hitting the comment section, staying active on there. Uh, but we got a ton of questions that we didn't really cover in the video. And that was solo elk calling and kind of the how to, what we've, and you know, we actually have a ton of experience solo calling because a long time ago it was like just Trent and I with a camera. If he was shooter, he was caller, I was filmer, vice versa, all that. So we've called in and, and we've had some success about it. So thought we'd share just a few lessons. I'm not going to spoil it, but setup is everything in that whole deal. But yeah, appreciate you guys for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, welcome to Born and Raised Outdoors. We're here to entertain, educate, and inspire. Uh, archery elk, a lot of big game stuff. We also have another channel called The Flyway. If you guys are interested in turkey hunting, waterfowl, go check out that channel right over here. Uh, it's another passion of ours and uh, kind of keeps us busy year round. So there is no off season, right? But anyways, with that, I will uh, let you guys jump into this video real quick. New shirt of the month. It's September leave a message. That's pretty much the email response, the voicemail. We're out of the office. We're gonna go chase. Land of the Free 5.0 is gonna kick off in November. Super excited about another season. Let's go watch this video. See ya. All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Super excited about this one. This is actually one of the most asked questions that we get, how to solo call for elk and what does that look like? And, you know, honestly, we started thinking about it, it's like, a lot of our hunts from the years past had always been solo calling. We just had a camera guy, Trent was over my shoulder, or Trevor or Steve, or I was over their shoulder filming. And that person was wholly responsible for calling in that elk, getting them killed. So uh, we've got a lot of experience. In the last few years, we've been more on the team calling side of it, hunting bigger groups, which is super fun, super enjoyable. But I also like that aspect and the challenge of trying to call a bull in by yourself. So with that, if you guys missed our last video on elk calling, I'll put the link up here and uh, right there, you can check it out. We go through basic sounds all the way to full strategies and you can take all those sounds and they're gonna apply to the solo caller. Uh, the biggest difference when solo calling elk is gonna be the setup. And that's where rubber meets the road. You can get a bull hung up or you can get a bull in your lap. So let's dive in. So as I talked about, all the sounds, everything's gonna apply here. Setup is gonna be critical. And what you wanna look for in a setup is gonna be terrain breaks. Anywhere where a bull is gonna hang up is gonna stop wherever he can see where that sound is coming from. So if, if the opening, he comes up over the ridge and he's 80 yards, from where you are calling, chances are he's gonna stop at 80 yards and he's gonna to try to evaluate, he's gonna to try to see that elk, get confirmation. Um, this may be a place where solo calling might be advantage to pack a decoy and use that. That's tip number one, possibility, throw a decoy out there and use that site as confirmation. But like I said, the setup's critical. So you wanna set up in a place where that bull has to come all the way into range and present a shot from where that sound came from and that whether it's a ridge, whether it's uh, thick, you're surrounded by a bunch of, you know, you're in heavy cover. I would say ideally solo calling, you wanna try to shoot for heavier cover. If you're in wide open terrain, that's gonna be a big difficult task to get that bull into range. So setup's critical, pay attention for any of those shooting lanes, anything that, you know, you can only see 30 yards through. That bull's gotta come all the way to 30 yards to get that shot. A uh, great reference to that, Steve back in 2009, solo filmed and solo called this Roosevelt in, came in out of the bottom, and he set up right on the lip of that. And uh, he was only like 15 yards, 20 yards from that lip. And that bull had to come all the way up over that ridge top to get that scene basically where that call was being made from. and call it right into his lap, 20 yards, boom, smoked it, and uh, the rest is history. So pay attention to those train brakes, get set up on the edge of that finger ridge, um, or in the break of that heavy cover. You know, you gotta come all the way through that heavy cover, finally got an opening, and that's your shot opportunity. So the other thing on the solo calling is go with what got you there. If that bull is responding to cow calls, you don't need to introduce a bugle. If he's making a way, don't all of a sudden wanna throw a challenge bugle just because you wanna hear yourself bugle. So go with what got you there. I had a case, um, first land of the free, Steve's back from Exo had just killed a bull. We're waiting for him to expire and go track him. All of a sudden this bull cracks off on, on his own and he's bugling on his own. 
Trent and I were like, let's go do this. So grab my bow, grab my bugle tube, go down there. And as I'm going down there, I cow call, bolt instantly answers. The cow call again, he answers, fires right back and he's closing the distance. Um, and this is one of those cases solo, we got hosed because I did not have a collar. Got into a spot that was in a bad setup and I had one lane that I was hoping he could come in and he went to the next lane over. The wind was kind of sketchy. It was that mid-morning deal. It was starting, the thermals were changing, but I stuck with a cow call. The one thing that I think back to myself is the bull came up and bugled. He was looking for confirmation where that where he last heard that cow. If I would have shut up, I feel like he may have gone a different direction, but I turned and cow called. I was already at full draw. I turned and cow called at full draw, and okay, he knows where I'm at. Well, he has that lane right there. He just decides to come up, and the wind just pushed off like right there at that last minute, and he whirled and gone. So it was a big win, exciting, calling a bull in, didn't get him killed. But hindsight 2020, I should have played that uh, a little bit more cat and mouse, I think, and should not have called at that point. But such is life. We live and we learn to move on. So another one we use a lot too is like making that last call and then sneaking into your setup. So if you if you can't quite close that distance, you know, where he's got to break that terrain, make that last call. And then this is where you're going to move as quickly and as quietly as possible, sneaking into that shooting position. Uh, Trent and I did this back in uh, 2013 in Colorado, had a bull bugling above us. We didn't want to get that position to where he was straight above us and looking down on us. So the last call I made, he was converging. We got that bull fired up. We're bugling back and forth. He's making some movements. And instead of sitting below that lip, we pushed up over on top of that lip, but I didn't make another call sound that whole time. That bull comes seeking, you know, you're kind of playing that hide and seek type. And uh, we basically met in that opening. So um, use that, you know, make a call. He's fired up, you know he's been making a lot of progress. Instead of slipping up again and making another call because you want to hear that bull bugle, let, shut up, let him, you know, come to that position and you just make that move quickly and as quietly as possible. If you break a stick, that's where it's like, okay, there's gonna be an elk there. He may stop and hang up. This is where you gotta put the ninja skills to work and uh, slip up there, like I said, as fast as possible, get set up and anticipate where you can get that bolt cut off. So I touched on playing hide and seek. That's another one, right? Is, you know, the, you don't wanna give away your exact location. Trevor did a great job of this when he was solo calling um, with a spike and that bull and two this is where cow calls honestly solo calling is a great opportunity to just keep that bull going he's coming in instead of fight he's coming in to breed the testosterone levels curiosity levels get amped up but trevor solo filmed this bull and exactly that he kept playing hiding to go seek with this bull and finally he had enough of it and down he came so let that curiosity build shut up let that curiosity get him killed so talking on calls here, one technique we use a lot of times, instead of calling at the bull, you're facing that direction, use the sound cast of turning your head. Uh, volume and direction is gonna be critical there. A lot of times too, when I'm solo calling, instead of just ripping a screamer bugle at his face, I'll turn that bugle down and back, get that sound muffled down, so you give the illusion that you might be back another 40, 60 yards. So instead of just tone that down, bring that bugle down. <coughs> Quiet it down, get that sound muffled down, give the illusion that you're painting that picture that that bull's back another 40, 60 yards. So don't always just scream in his face and try to cut him off. Use that um, control and directional. The other tip too, especially works good with like a lightweight glove, a little merino glove or something like that, is you can cap the end of that bugle. <coughs> The volume difference is huge, but he can still hear that sound, so you can kind of muffle that down. So, and same with the cow call. Don't always just call right at him. Give him the turn, cover your mouth. Get real soft and quiet on that. Same deal. As you build that excitement up, tone your calling down, keep it quiet. Make, give him that illusion that it's further. Especially this will work better in like open terrain where you don't have those terrain breaks or the brush where they have to come all the way. It gives that illusion that that bull's back a little bit further. So one advantage is using, when that bull's raking, when you're by yourself, you have less movement, you have less sound, you know, things that would clue in that there may be multiple people 
or multiple elk in the area, you can use that advantage when they're raking, move, slip in on them, use that stock. You may not always call a bull in solo, but you have a better chance too of like, if that bull's bugling on his own, don't give away your position, just slip in there. And you may have that critical point where you need to call, but a lot of times too, if that bull's cracking off, you can get in there, shadow that herd. But especially if he's raking, if he's raking, you can get away with a lot of movement and a lot of sound at that point. Like they're focused here, they're making lots of noise. They're kind of oblivious to what's going on. So the only critical part there is if they're with a bunch of cows or raghorns, you gotta look at all the elk. So move when you can move. A great case in that, uh, Trent and Tyler were in Colorado in 2017 and they were hunting just two of them. Trent was filming, call, Tyler was calling and sneaking and this bull was raking and every time he raked, they would get 10 yards closer. You'd rake again, they get another 10 yards. And all of a sudden they went from 80 to 40 in a pretty quick hurry. So using that time when he's raking, his attention's fully focused there, boom, go for it. So another thing to, to look at is if you call a bull in and he hangs up and he's like 70 yards and he's standing there looking, don't call. Don't give away that position. Just be patient. Let, let things develop. Sometimes he may just out of curiosity come, but if he can see where you're calling from, don't call. If he loses curiosity and he turns around and goes, this is the opportunity where let him move off a of site, make a call from your current location, and then as fast as you can, slip up to where you can shoot to the, where that bull was last standing. This is where you gotta be quiet too. Like if you break a branch during that, a lot of times it'll clue him in and he may not come all the way back to that point. But if an elk has been in this, you know, standing up there on the ridge looking, and he peels off, a lot of times you can make that movement call and he'll come right back to that same spot. So one technique too, like in all else fail, we've had bulls hang up. Uh, this actually happened to me in New Mexico in 2020. I had a bull came down and he stood behind some oak brush. I drew too soon and I was holding draw. When he finally stepped out, I was literally just absolutely shaking. And that, that point is when I fully collapsed. The bull saw me, spooks. He goes up 60 yards and barks. And one tool that I would add to your calling uh, repertoire is gonna be the bark scream, bark chuckle. And this is gonna be basically a confirmation, nope, this I'm a bull here, come back. And it actually works pretty good. So the sound on the bark scream or bark chuckle, you basically are gonna make that exaggerated cow call or chuckle, but in a very sharp, shrill note. So a bark sounds like this. So you take that bark and then you add the scream or a chuckle. A lot of times you'll hear a bull, they'll bark and then chuckle. It's a very fast And uh, this just, it, it's worked. We've, we've done it plenty of times. In this case, it, it actually worked flawless. The bull came right back into the same spot where we were standing before. This is what that sound's gonna be. So that's a bark screen, bark chuckle. It's a good one, solo calling. If all else fails, things are falling off. The barks, bull's barking at you. He, he's, he's asking for that confirmation, where are you at? Um, you can sound that off and hopefully get him to close that distance. And in closing, I think the big thing for solo calling for elk is gonna be mindset, right? It's this never quit attitude. You're doing something hard. I mean, it, it is definitely easier when you got emotional support from a hunting partner, um, you got pack out support from a hunting partner, like all those things, solo hunting, hats off, mad respect for you guys going out doing backcountry stuff solo. Just, you gotta be mentally prepared. It is, it is gonna be a challenge. You're doing five, seven days in the backcountry all by yourself, you start talking to yourself and sure enough, you'll start talking about, man, that hamburger sounds pretty good right now. That cold beer back at the truck, I'm gonna quit. Well, have that never quit attitude, go for it hard every day and uh, just talk yourself up, you can do this. Um, so hopefully this helps a little bit on, if you're venturing in the woods solo, it's definitely doable guys. Like you can get out there. If, if you don't have a good hunting partner, don't let that hold you back from going out there and chasing your dream in the elk woods. So with that, we're out. If uh, this brought any value to you at all, I would greatly appreciate you to share this video. And uh, two, we got the old t-shirt of the month in. It's September to leave a message. I love this one because that's it. We're in the elk woods all month September. Uh, it's just that mindset, never quit attitude. Here we go. But you can join this. It's $21.99 a month. For every month that you're into it, you get an entry into a blacktail hunt that we're giving away in October 2023. We would love to have you out here in Oregon chasing deer with us. So with that, I'm out, guys. Have a good one. 
No worries Over oh, nickels and dimes Over oh, nine to five grind I gotta get loose sometimes In trouble 